Okay, let's go ahead and take turn, turn our attention to the HVAC modeling and really those types of systems and just kind of push that a little bit further because we want to talk about these basic systems that have these air terminals and air handlers and the ducts that connect them. But then start thinking about systems that actually tie them all together and how we size these systems because there's really a, a very precise science to the whole thing and I don't know, it's, it's actually pretty easy to get going with. This. So. Let me go ahead and switch back over to Revit, but open a different version of that very same building. We're going to open up the mechanical system. So I'm going to pop back over to Revit. I can find it. And let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and close up some of these windows just so that I'm kind of conserving um, memory on my machine. Say goodbye to my structural model. And I'm even going to say goodbye to uh, my... Uh, unusual organic form model because I know that with all those different panels in the curtain systems, that's actually taking up a fair amount of memory in the background to maintain all that. So I'm going to close up some of these things. Okay, hang on. It's doing a little redrawing. I think it's probably trying to come up with the... Uh curtain wall now. Let's see what it's doing. There we go. And as much as I love you, I'm going to say goodbye to that. Although I, I did think that was kind of a cool building. Okay, what I'm going to open up now is actually, it's the building that's called uh, the simple or the sample mechanical model. This is the simple one we're going to get to in just a few minutes. But let's go and open up that sample one. Kind of give you a sense of how complicated these things can get. So it's really a very good example, just so you can sort of see at a high level how the overall strategy works if you open up this uh, sample project. Hey, it's a coming. Almost there. There we go. So this might kind of knock your socks off at first, but it's uh let's kind of take it apart a little piece at a time. To get a sense of what's going on here. I'm going to go back to the back end of the building because I think it's sort of easy to understand well, what's going on back over there. Yeah. In this building, you'll see there's a lot of different things going to happen. Um, let me just hide the, these are lighting fixtures. Those are lighting fixtures which are uh, in the uh, ceiling plane. Let me just turn those off, although we do need to be aware of those ultimately when we're placing our air terminals and our ducts to, to make sure we're watching out for them. Simplify our view a little bit. Okay. Now you can basically see there's a lot of different kind of ducts kind of floating around in here. And let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. In this system, it looks like, oh, we have some supply ducts. Okay. And we have little air terminals, little flexi ducts that's connecting to those supply ducts. Okay. You'll see that there's these other things. These are the return diffusers. They're actually just kind of hanging around in the ceiling plane. What's happening in this building, someone was asking about it earlier in the quarter, um, the whole ceiling is acting as a plenum. Okay, so what's happening is the supply side is ducted as we're bringing the good air into the spaces. We're taking it to very specific targeted locations. But for the return, we're just actually pulling air throughout the entire over the ceiling space. That entire space is acting just as a big channel to pull the return air back. Again, there's a pluses and minuses to doing it that way. You know, it's a, a little less precise, and there's some inefficiencies to doing it this way, but there's also a lot less ductwork being run. So some buildings prefer to do it this way. But the whole notion does kind of go from terminal, typically through some flexi duct to give us that last flexibility right at the end, but not too much of it. We'll have some hard-sided duct moving its way on back. It'll move back to, there'll be some sort of an air handler that's actually causing the air to blow around. And then as you move back to the system, I think you can actually sort of see it here. Based on the amount of flow through the pipe and the length of the pipe, okay, the pipes tend to be getting bigger as you go from the terminal on back to the central core. Because what happens is, as we go past all these individual terminals, 
for example, this terminal over here is rated as having a capacity of 100 liters per second. This one over here is probably another 100 liters per second. But what happens is we pick up more, okay, it's getting to be 200 and then moving back to 300. There's a lot of more flow running through. In fact, let me show you. There's a neat tool called the Systems Inspector. See if I can kind of make that work for you. What the Systems Inspector will let you do is I can inspect a system. And you can start to see that within any section, it's 100. It's moving back through 100. We move up to 330. Why is it 330? It's probably because we have 115, like 115 there and 100 over here. So it's up to 330. It's going to pick up some more. Now it's up to 560. 790. So by the time you go moving on there, we really have higher pressure. We also have uh, like you know more flow through the whole space. So there's a whole system to how these things all get orchestrated. Okay, so let me go ahead and cancel that. Just gonna close it up. So you know this model is actually a great example of an overall mechanical system for a building. You see, there's a lot of just moving air through the building. You'll actually see up in here. There's also this big cooling unit up on the roof. Kind of some big old kind of water is moving through and fans are moving through as a way of kind of dissipating heat. So there's a big cooling area that the system is going through it. Oh, what else do I see over here? There's a little uh, ventilation fan over here too. Kind of like more an exhaust fan. And what this is doing is this is just pulling up air, you know, through the rooftop. So it's just pulling air through to ultimately exhaust it back into the space. So a lot of interesting things going on in the building. It's a good building just to kind of take a look at just to see how complex these things can get. So let me close it for now because, again, we don't need to start with something that complex. We should need to learn on something a little bit simpler. And what I'm going to recommend you do in terms of learning on a simpler building is actually open that other project, which was called, oh, like simple mechanical project or something like that because it's really just a, it's a better one to get started with. And this one, oh, it's so simple, we can all understand what's going on here. So this building is really a much simpler one. We've got a couple of just very basic spaces in here. Let's take a look at them. No worries. We're, we're, we're kind of hanging and we hear your microphone. So if you want to mute, that's fine. Or jump on in. Hey, big wrong. Oh, no worries. We can mute you if you need. No, I understand. Oh, no worries. I'm going to mute you right now, and you can unmute when you need to. So, not that we don't want to hear from you. <laughs> but actually, yeah, if you need to, yeah, just go ahead and unmute yourself. I think that should work. Okay. So we got this pretty simple building here. Let me kind of explain what I should have put into the building so far just to get ourselves started. Okay, there is this notion of, you know, really two different spaces here. I have a big old space and I have a secondary space over here. I got some walls between them. Maybe I should put a door in there. Maybe I'll bring in a door family. I haven't put anyone in here, any of them in here yet. So I'll put in a double flush door over here. Oops. I'm looking at it in a 3D view. It's not going to let me do that. Go over in uh, the 2D view. Just to give you a sense, I'll put a door to the outside too. Okay, not too much in the way of windows. But here's what we got going on in this space. If I go back to the 3D view, we'll take a look at it again. I got these two different spaces, and I have a couple of main pieces of equipment in here. I have some return side ducts. They're kind of coated in purple right now. I have some terminals and some duct work that connects it back to an air handler. I have some supplies over on this side of the building. So this is a real simple system. All that's really going on in this system is we have, oh, kind of these return terminals, kind of or supply tied, feeding air on this side of the space. We have some return on this side, pulling the air out. And hopefully it's all balanced. That's going to be one of the things we really sort of care about. 
and let's see if we can uh, just uh, you know rebuild that system for you so you get a sense of really how it all works. Okay, so how about this? Just to build the system, well, actually let me do this, one more thing. Let's uh, show you another aspect of it that is useful just in terms of understanding what's going on. These terminals and these ducts and this air handle are actually tied into something called a system. There really are, there's a return system here and there's a supply system here. And if we want to look at those systems, here's what we need to do. You want to open up something called the system browser. And let's see if I can find it in the interface in a couple of different ways. Oh, I'm very bad at finding things in the interface here. What I'll usually do is I'll go to view and under user interface, I'll find the system browser there. But all the system browser is, just so you can sort of see it, is it's really a summary of the different systems in the building. Right now, it looks like I have two mechanical systems. I have a return side system, and I have a supply side system. And within those, I have a couple of different systems that have some diffusers and an air handler. And I have some systems. Yeah, I have a, the, the supply side diffusers and the air handler. And the nice thing about the system browser is it's actually active. It's keeping track of things. So, for example, if I click on anything, for example, this piece of uh, this terminal, let me zoom on in there so you can sort of see a little better. You'll see it highlighted over there. It's a 500 cubic feet a minute terminal. This one over here is also 500 cubic feet per minute. Okay. This air handler is out here. Okay, it's 1,000 cubic feet. What it's doing is actually, it is summing these things up. So as I add more things to it, you'll see that the values change. So for example, if I took that return terminal over there, and I said as opposed to 750, it was actually doing, or 500, I said it was doing 750 cubic feet per minute. What you'll see is that the browser then goes ahead and updates itself. It's actually actively keeping track of and doing all the calculations necessary. So as you build these little chains of dependencies, it's doing a good job of actually maintaining all that stuff for you. Okay, so this browser turns out to be a really handle way of tracking our systems, and we want to sort of link all these things together so they're understood not only as just sort of objects that are kind of there physically in space, but we start to understand their performance too. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and take the space over here. Let me zoom it to fit. What I'm going to do is actually go through and knock out all the ductwork so we can run that again, just so you get a sense of really what that looks like. I'm trying to zoom on up and uh, make it look right. So you can follow along if you want to, or just watch along, either way. What I'm going to do is take out a lot of this ductwork, and I really want to just leave these uh, couple things over here. For example, I could take out that piece of ductwork here and take out another piece over here, and I'm just unhinging my system. You'll see it's kind of messing things up over here right now. But if I want to knock out a bunch of ductwork all at once, what I might do is just kind of highlight it all. And it's going to do a filter. And I'm just going to take out the duct fittings. I'm going to leave the air terminals, and I'm going to leave the mechanical equipment. I'm going to take out the ducts and the duct fittings. and then I'll do the backspace to get rid of them. So now I got a relatively clean system. Okay, and if you want to customize this even a little bit further, if you think we might want to have three of these terminals, you can kind of copy those over, keep it to two, that's fine. Go over here, and I'm gonna copy that one also. Just because I'm trying to keep it in balance. Okay, let's see what this is. That is understood as being a return diffuser. Excellent. That's understood as being a supply diffuser. Great. Okay. Before we start running all the ductwork, let me sort of explain a little about this whole notion of systems and how things become systems. Because these two pieces, these two terminals over here, they're currently understood as being a system. They're not only sort of a single terminal, but if you do a little tabbing right now, you'll see. It's actually understood as there's a higher level thing, a system, a duct system. It's kind of almost like beam system. There's a high level concept that relinks them all, or links them all together. So this is my so return air system right now. 
my return error system looks pretty good right now, except I've actually added a new terminal here. What I want to do is edit the system so I can add that in. So I need to basically add that terminal into the system, and then it will sort of be understood to be yeah, part of the same system so I can finish it. Okay. Hopefully now, let's take a look at it. If I do the tab, all three of them are included. And you'll see over here, all three of them are included in the system. So let me do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab one of those terminals and tabs. See, they're all part of this system. Okay, I'm going to say edit the system and add that third error terminal into the system just so they're all working together. Okay, and it's, this whole notion of what's together in a system ultimately determines how the calculations and how the flow is all working. So, uh, do I hear, uh, is there a question coming in or let's stop and pause. Feeling good? Okay. If you're feeling good there, let's go ahead and start thinking about uh, the ducks and how we run these things. So here's the deal in terms of the ducks and oh, all these different things. What I like to do, just because these air handlers sort of confuse me a little bit, is I'll often come to the air handler, choose it, and you'll see it has ins and outs. Okay, it has an electrical in and out. It has ductwork in and out. It has a piping in and out. That's if we need to put some sort of chiller in there. What I'll do is something like this just to get myself started, just so I can keep track of what's the in and what's the out. If you actually click on this little guy right here and say create duct and kind of pull on out, okay, and it'll go through and give me just a little piece of duct work to work with. It's the size it needs. It's sort of basically putting a piece of duct on both sides now that matches the size of uh, the opening. Okay, so it looks like I have this currently oriented, so the uh, return is over here on the left side, the supply is over here on the right side. What if I kind of show you those? Okay, I just got some pieces of duct work, and we're going to start connecting it all together now. So I usually start with that just so I can keep track of what has to connect to what, and the color coding is a really good cue uh, to let me uh, understand what needs to be connected. So if I got that, let's start putting some duct work in here. The big thing about duct work you have to sort of start thinking about or you know, making work is it's really just the height as you go through and place things. So I'm going to put a piece of duct work in here, and I'll just make it kind of a very standard, oh, I'll put it at level one, but put it 10 feet off of level one, just kind of somewhere halfway between. I don't want it to be above the ducts. And as a starting point, I'm just going to make something really simple because it's going to help me size it itself in just a little bit. I'm going to say make it 12 by 12, 10 feet off the floor. Let me come over to this side first. So this is going to be my return air duct. I can choose the type right here. And to get started, I'll just go through and oh, I'll just sort of draw some sort of a piece of duct work that's going to go like here. Okay, I can keep on drawing that in individual sections and pieces. But what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to come close, come back in here. Notice that's still a little bit separate. If I trim them together, it'll kind of put the right connection in there. Same way over here, I'm going to go through and put a duct over here. And again, I can trim that or I can extend it either way. That'll sort of work. It'll join them together. But it tries to be very smart about putting all the connections in. And then I'm going to do it over here also. I'll just tee that right in there. That'll do a pretty good job. Now it's looking pretty good on the uh, kind of return side. Um, what I typically do is I'll use flexi duct to connect the very last pieces. So I'll go from the top of that over there, top of that one over to the end of the duct, top of that one over the duct. Let's just pause there for a second and see how that's looking. Not too bad? 
We zoom on out there. Okay, um, let us do this. If I got that return side looking pretty good in terms of what's going on, what I want to then do is actually just try to connect this whole return side into the return side on the air handler. And how can I do that? Oh, what I'll usually do is I'll go through and kind of put some sort of ductwork piece that comes pretty close. But it turns out there's actually a little bit of a height difference there. So what I often end up needing to do is something like this. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's, um, I will connect this side. Hang on. I'm going to get those two together. See if it'll do it. Because it's got the height difference in there. Sometimes I have to use my little connect into to do it. We'll see if that'll work. It looks like it's trying to be ever so smart. Let's see if it did it. I'm going to rotate that up. Check this out. Not only did it go through and kind of join them, but it actually went through and put in all the different kind of adapters and connectors and everything necessary to go and do the resizing. So definitely very, very cool in terms of what it's doing for you. It gets a lot of mileage in terms of figuring all that out. Okay, so that's the whole return side of our system. Now, I'm going to do a very similar thing on the supply side. So if you have any questions, go ahead and jump in. I'm just going to do something very similar over there. We're all say supply side. And yeah, but please, you know, if you have a question, jump on in here. Let's get them answered. Again, 12 by 12, just sort of running the main duct. Come on in here. I'm going to sort of, again, come close, but not quite touch it. I'm going to escape out of there so I can kind of do the next one. Again, I'll kind of keep it close, but again, not quite touching. And again, over here, oops, too far. Ever so close, but not quite. I need a little bit of flexi to kind of complete the system, so I'll put some flexi from here to here. Now, the reason we don't like Flexi all over the place, Flexi is very, very nice in terms of being able to dimensionally kind of get things wherever you want to, but there's a little bit of an efficiency loss. It's not as good as kind of a nice, smooth, hard-walled duct. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. What I now want to do is very similar to what I did over on the other side. I'm just going to go through and kind of bring something close. It's a little strange to me that it's not snapping. Try it again. Oh, that's flexy. That's why. Forget that. Hang on, I'm gonna undo that. Try that again. Hard wall duct. That's looking a little bit better. That's kind of what it more I had in mind. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing where I'll join these down. Okay, and we got one good looking system now. So let's pause there for just a second. So, in terms of what's going on here, any questions? It's really this whole notion of kind of linking things together, but we did it in sort of a very specific order. I like to get the uh, terminals and the equipment in place first, link them together into a system, and it's kind of weird. You actually almost add the ducts in last. Okay, we're a little out of balance in my system here. You might see that I got 2,000 on one side. I have, oh, yeah, 1,500 on the other side. So I probably need to go through and make some changes over here too. Maybe that one's a 750. 
and that one down here is also 750 because you like these things to stay in belts. Okay, now I got 2,000 on each side. I see the air handler is now handling 2,000. Okay, so let me pause there for a second. In terms of we got basic ducting going to terminals and an air handler just to blow all the air through, pulling all 2,000 cubic feet a minute from the uh, kind of pinky ducts heading to the bluey ducts. Does that make sense? Let me just pause and see if there's any questions. Ah, typically, ah, okay, well, so let's see what the questions are here. How much is the depth of the ceiling? Very good question. Um, it's really as much as is necessary to kind of hold that duct work and the electrical and the piping. I would say it's very common to be like two to three feet. Okay. It's depending if you, you could be need to be taller, just if you have a whole lot of mechanical equipment, if it's there, but two to three feet is actually pretty good. And how do we bring the ducts to multiple levels down? That's another very good question. Basically, what you want to do is if you want to run a vertical duct, okay, this is the one that always kind of is hard for me. But let's see if we can make it work. If I'm running a duct and I want to like run a duct just horizontally, okay, that actually works out really well. If you want to run a duct vertically, what you do is you put another value in here, like zero. I want to take it down. Okay, and now I'm running like a vertical duct. Oops, let me put the zero in there now. I guess I'm at zero right now. So, yeah, now I'm going up again. Hang on. It's basically, you, you end up putting a different offset in there. So that's there. So the offset of this one's going to be 30. Okay, and now I have a vertical duct. And I can go back to horizontal again. So you know, basically what's going to happen is typically in your core, if you'd have a core, or at least in some mechanical space, we'd go through and kind of add those vertical ducts in there. So that makes any sense. Uh, the minimum fuel height, the unobstructed ceiling height. Oh, that's, oh, you mean the, you mean for the, the, the people below? Or up in the ceiling plane? Uh, a minimum ceiling height, let's talk about that. You mean, you mean for the, the occupants? Is that correct? Yeah, yes, yeah. oh, you know, so for the occupants, it's interesting. It has to be, well, it's typically eight feet. Um, I think the absolute minimum you can get away with is like seven or seven foot six. In fact, if you want to check it out, go downstairs into y in Y2E2 and check out the mezzanine level. There's a very low ceiling in there. And I think it may be seven foot six there or something like that. But there's a code requirement to it. But I think eight feet is typical for what makes people comfortable. You know, when it's less than that, people start getting comfortable, uncomfortable. I think it's, it's either seven or seven foot six. I don't remember right offhand. Okay, so we can run some duct work. I have some um, unconnected duct work over here right now. Let me just take that out just so it's not bothering us. But vertically, again, if you want to run vertical ducts, it's just basically take a duct. You're typically running at the same offset relative to the floor. It's basically if you change the offset, okay, it's going to interpret that as being a vertical run. And then you're basically back to horizontal again. Okay. Last thing we want to show you today, just so you sort of understand this, is, hey, I've been putting in all these ducts. I've been putting in these 12 by 12 ducts. I got a 12 by 12 duct over here. I got a 12 by 12 duct over here. It got a little smart over here in terms of there were some bigger ducts when it needed to connect into the air handler. But you might be asking, you know, is this thing really kind of adequately sized right now? And we can use, based on all these cubic feet per minute, a little uh, kind of smarts to go through and figure out what the sizing should be. Let me show you how that works. Just to finish up for today. If I choose the whole system, let me choose all those. What I did was I just tabbed. Let me just, uh, I select over one, I tab, I got a single branch, I tab the third time, I got the whole thing. I'll click there. If you choose a whole section of duct, you can choose the duct and pipe sizing calculator. And that sounds like a pretty fantastic thing. You can go through and choose to size your ducts based on friction, velocity, or some combination of those things. 
For example, if I want to sort of consider velocity, oh, and duct sizing is very important. If ducts are too small, you have problems where they're noisy and you generate static. Um, there's a whole science to how you choose those things, but we can choose the criteria, uh, what it is we want to drive it by in terms of the friction or the velocity or equalizing the friction, whatever it is, or the static regain. Let's kind of choose it based on velocity, okay? Um, for the branch sizing, let's go, I can sort of put some uh, calculations in there to restrict it, but I'm going to say okay, and let's see what happens. It's doing a little calculations right now, kind of based on my criteria. And with any luck, let's see what it does. I see a whole lot of flashing. Let's see what it did. This duct, which only services that one little end, there are only 750 coming to that, could be nine by nine. This needs to be still nine by nine. This branch back here, by the time it doubled up, is now 14 by 14. Over on the other side there, it's 11 by 11. It's getting up to 11 or 17 by 17, and finally, getting up to the 17 by 17, which is what it can use to actually connect in based on the velocity and the criteria we gave it. So it just got to be very smart based upon uh, the uh, precise requirements of what went in here about resizing the ducts. If I would go through now and add another terminal somewhere along the branch and increase the capacity, that duct sizing would probably change. But that's okay. The model can take care of that for us. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'll say duct sizing. Say that, let's let it do its work on that side. That's really the idea behind this is really if the model is not only just kind of a nice graphical representation, but it really is starting to represent the physics of the situation. And we actually do have accurate control over the cubic feet per minute that need to be moving through and how they add up. That in the same way that we can resize the beams, we can actually start very smartly sizing the system. So you don't have to just be guessing about how big the ductwork is. The ductwork can actually be very systematically uh, sized to be exactly what you need to go through and meet those requirements. And that's really the big lesson here. That's what it's really all about with duct sizing is that you always want to, you know, have ducts that are appropriately sized to kind of meet your design requirements and the model can do that for you. Okay. Last concept to leave you today is there are these different notions of these rooms in here and you're going to see that they actually show up in a concept called, let's see if I can find it in here. Under the Analyze tab, I always have trouble finding things. Oh, I have to do it in a floor plan view. It won't work in 3D view. I can create something called Spaces. So I can say that's a space, and that's a space. What are spaces all about? Spaces are all about really how the rooms are being used. So if, for example, you choose that, you can start to think things like, oh, you know, the total amount of cubic feet per minute moving through that space, we can start seeing a little bit about the space type and how it's used, for example, if it's heated and cooled, you know, really what this is, whether it's a classroom or if it's a, you know, corridor, if it's an audience seating area. And this is where we can actually start to say how much space is needed per person, how much heat is being generated by each of those pieces, persons, you know, what are the power requirements in those spaces. That's where we're going to go next time is once we just basically get the air moving, the notion of spaces is then going to let us talk about the use of the building itself and really ultimately, you know, what's going to be necessary to drive the heating and cooling system to make sure that it's sized appropriately. Same thing with the loads. We can control, you know, issues about the people that are in there, what the air changes are per people. But all those things that we talk about as principles that are going to drive the design, we can encode those right in the model like we put the structural loads on and then use the model to help us compete those things. Okay, so that is for next time. But hopefully this made sense in terms of just making some very basic duct work into the building. Let me go ahead and flip back over on this side and see if there's any last questions before we wrap up for tonight. No last questions?
Okay, if there is not, let us adjourn for the evening. Thank you all for attending online. Again, we'll put oh, we'll put this on out. Uh, Vicky, you got a question? Nope. <laughs> no worries. I, play, I do that all the time. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap her up. We'll put the recording out online. Please, please, please come to your check-in with all sorts of good questions and put us to work so we can uh, help give you guidance about where you are need to be proceeding on your building. But uh, let's just go ahead and like uh, just keep on uh, pushing ahead and like uh, getting your buildings finer and finer, incorporating more and more of these systems in there as we layer in oh, all the different systems that have to work together. Okay, beautiful. Okay, thank you all, and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday. Okay, you guys take care.